Well, okay then, what are we doing today? Well, we have our 1973 Plymouth back up on the jack. And what we're doing today is we're going to uh, take a look at the brakes. I've had this car about a year and it's really kind of just sat around in that time. Uh, it does run really good, drives pretty good. And so, uh, just finally got around to uh, dealing with a couple minor things that needed to have uh, looked at and one of them is the brakes. The brakes work well for the most part except that um, it has a tendency to pull when you put the brakes on. In other words that when you put the brakes on the car tries to go this way, tries to pull to the left and even at slow speeds you know a couple three miles an hour you can touch the brakes and you'll see the steering wheel kind of turn and try to, it still tries to go this way so uh, this car has four wheel drum brakes on it and you can see one of them right there it's the front drum and this is one of the few cars that still had drum brakes up through the 70s when most everything else had went on over to disc and I'm not going to convert it to disc brakes. This is a all original car. It's got pretty low miles on it. It's just going to be kept as is. So, you know, when you start talking about drum brakes and pulling and acting up like that, people kind of they kind of have a knee jerk reaction. They think, well, you just can't ever get drum brakes to work right, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, yada yada yada. Well, that's not true. These cars. These cars were so new, and people wouldn't have stood for that. It's not a when there's something like that going on, they're pulling one way or the other. That's not a that's not a symptom of it just having drum brakes. That means there's something wrong with the brakes. And uh, you know, people will say they say, well, you need to make sure they're adjusted. I see that all the time when you talk about drum brakes on forums. Well, <clears throat> that's true. They need to be adjusted, but this this vehicle. Is modern enough that it has self-adjusting drum brakes. It means the brakes back there and the brakes up here work exactly the same way. They have self-adjusters so when you back up they uh, adjust to the correct uh, distance between the shoes and the drum. So if you have an older car that does not have self-adjusting brakes and yes you do need to adjust it. They are pretty sensitive to that but these these, uh, these are self-adjusting. And you know you look at how often do people have to deal with rear drum brakes? That's kind of a disconnect people have. They don't look at it that way. It's like, well, you can go tens of thousands of miles and not ever have to pay attention to your drum brakes, but why is it if they're on the front, you should have to condemn them and say they're not working right, they're trouble, they're a problem. That's not true. It's not true. That's 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 just a knee-jerk reaction, and it's the wrong one, too. So what generally happens when you have... You know, drum brakes, I will say, they are more prone to reacting unusually, you know, if you have something going on. But when you have one that's pulling one way or the other, uh, you know, you need to think about what's going on. And people tend to focus on the wrong thing. Now, this car, like I said, it pulls that way. So that tells people that, well, you know, the first thing they think, they think, well, it must be that left brake is doing something wrong. That wheel's grabbing. That's, that's the first thing you'll hear people say. They say it's grabbing. Well, yeah, it's grabbing because it's the only one working up here. What it is is normally the brake that works is working and working the best pulls the car in that direction. So if that wheel, the brake's functioning and that one's not, then it's going to go that way. If that brake is functioning and that one is not, it's going to go that way. The, the brake that's working is going to pull the car in that direction. So obviously, what we have going here, for some reason or another, that brake on this car is working, this one is not. And uh, we're going to do some testing to see why it's not working. And another thing to check also, if you have an old car, uh, one thing that w with drum brakes can make one pull is if you have some worn out suspension components. Like on this car, Specifically on this car, we have uh, upper A-arm, control arm bushings called an A-arm right there. It's a rubber bushing. And one back here. We also have a thing here called, you can't really see it, but there's a big 
rubber donut. This is called a strut rod on this car, and all this generally does is it just helps locate the lower control arm, which you see right there. So these have a rubber bushing here, and they're mounted solid back here. Back here, they're mounted solid, but they got a big rubber bushing up here. So if those things get worn out, then what happens is that when you put the brakes on, they can make the whole assembly here, the whole suspension assembly, move, you know, move back or something like that, and that absolutely will cause a pull. <clears throat> but this car, uh, like I said, it's got pretty low miles on it, and the suspension's in good shape on it, so we know that's not what we're looking at. And I can look back here, and I can already see that uh, it's had a new brake line put on it. So this is going to bear some investigation. This is the original steel line, which does not look not look terrible, but it doesn't look great. <clears throat> and one thing I noticed. I was looking back at a video I made a few months ago when I was working on this car and I commented I said that this brake seemed like it was dragging at that point and it was hard to turn this drum well when I pulled the wheel off and got over here and uh, spun this drum I noticed this time around it spins very easily and I think what I had done I had backed off the adjustment of this manually earlier so <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I suspect is going on, I suspect we've got a problem where the fluid is coming down to the line here. It's at least getting probably this far. Uh, getting this far. And we either have a blockage in our line somewhere to the, to the wheel, or we have a wheel cylinder that's possibly frozen up. So we're going to do some testing. We're going to... Uh, we're going to pump the brakes up and get some brake pressure out to the wheel and we're going to uh, crack the bleeder and see if we're getting brake pressure to the to the wheel cylinder and go from there and see what that tells us. <clears throat> now here's the deal with brakes the way I approach a brake problem. I approach a brake problem like this exactly the same as an electrical problem. So you have an electrical, say that light there didn't work. Now you don't want to, if you have a light that's not working or you have a brake out here that's not working, the last thing you want to do is go to the very source and start diagnosis there. You don't want to go to the battery or you don't want to go to, like, on the, if it's the brakes, you don't want to go to the master cylinder. You know, some people, when they start diagnosing car problems, they start at the ex extreme wrong end of things. If you have a problem like this, if you have some system like brakes or electrical or something like that that is sending like brake pressure or sending electricity to the device and the device is not well on working, you start at that device. That's where you start your, your diagnostics. You don't start up there. So what we're going to do, we're going to start at the very end of things. We're going to start out here at the brakes and see, uh, we're just going to start checking stuff till we see if we find what, where the where the brake fluid is stopping or what's not working or that case. That's how you approach things like that. Don't stop, don't don't just, you know, you have people that the first thing they'll say on this if the brake out here is not working, even though that one and that one and that one are working. They'll say, oh well, maybe it's the master cylinder. No. <laughs> That's not where you start, guys. Don't 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 do don't do your don't do your diagnostics like that. Uh, you know, that they get you in a lot of unnecessary money and expense and work so you don't want to do that whenever I hear somebody and they say I'm thinking that it could be this or I'm thinking it could be that you know what I hear I don't I say to that I say you need to take the thinking part out of that and put guessing you're guessing it could be this you're guessing it could be that so let's dig into this thing and take this uh, right front brake here and see if we can determine uh, what our problem is thanks for watching tune in the next installment and we'll see where we're at.